that you can uh, say, okay, uh, less power, more energy efficient, smaller, uh, you, can, you can switch faster costs when you, when you think it to the end might be lower. So, so that's, that's important. And ideally, there should be quantitative targets, figures of merit that you can work towards. Then we have this argument of competitiveness. The, uh, the idea is, of course, that in midterm uh, or long term, the European nanoelectronics industry should benefit from that, that you, that you put some, somehow a new technology in the pipeline that can, that can boost uh, the nanoelectronics industry in Europe that has high potential. Uh, you should keep the integration uh, in mind that, that this can be put on an integrated circuit, in my simple words. So uh, this is especially important if, if uh, you work on three-dimensional stacks or on, on cryogenic uh, environment. And for the design topic that uh, Europe should be strengthened, the European industry should be strengthened to, the, to build up design capabilities for such advanced circuits. On the next slide, I show you um, somehow the different technology readiness levels. This you all know, so it starts from basic principles and it goes to, uh, so this is research and development, then we have design and prototyping, then we have production, and uh, the call is somewhere, uh, uh, some, somewhere uh, positioned here, so TL4, TL5. Um, just for your information, if you want to go higher, you know all the Excel program, uh, the electronic components and systems, which is run by us with the member states uh, with, with, with very significant uh, uh, contributions from the member states. So this is the place to go if you want to uh, do more mature work in uh, nano-electronic components. And there are the national programs. This is a slide my colleague put just for information. We have a new portal for funding and tender opportunities. Might be interesting. You can look at it if you're interested in tendering. I didn't know it myself, so, so uh, commission made progress to have one entry point and you can look all, for all the possibilities where you can uh, have financial support. So you have here Erasmus, you have Horizon 2020, but you have also things like Creative Europe, the movies, and asylum migration, integration in food, and all this stuff. Might be interesting. Anyhow, um, these are web links uh, that are relevant for, for nanoelectronics, I would say. First of all, the work program. Whatever I said so far, and I will, when I, when I answer your questions afterwards, uh, this to be checked against the, the Bible, which is the work program text. Um, then there, below there are the websites of, uh, of the electronics, of the policy uh, in nanoelectronics, if you need that for argumentation in your proposal, digital single market, cyber, cyber physical systems for the design, and uh, Excel, there should be also, yeah, okay, th there's another link from this one to the Excel website. Then, last but not least, the web, address, the, the, the email addresses of my colleagues who are really uh, in the business and who, who worked at the call. So this is Henri Raschbenbach. You can send an email. Francisco Ibanez, I mentioned. My name is Werner Steinhögel. Um, okay, that would it be for, for the moment. You are free to ask questions. I try my best to, 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 to give you replies. Um, it might be that some Someone of you has prepared a slide set. I am not aware of it. I looked yesterday. There was nothing. But uh, if somebody wants to present in two or three minutes a uh, proposal idea, this is also possible. We still have a bit of time. Good. So feel free to ask questions. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Hello, good morning. I would like to ask if in that call we can submit about organic transistors. 
or only be in CMOS? Okay, I, I would say of course you can. Yeah, the call uh, targets alt alternatives which go beyond silicon CMOS. So organic, so working with organic material is certainly possible. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this is from my view. Please check it uh, with your peers and maybe uh, my colleagues uh, in the nanoelectronics unit. You, what you need then is to kind to show that you can scale uh, yeah. this, these organic de devices. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not limited on Linsing? No, 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 okay. it's you. not. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's not. Thank you. Hi, um, I don't have a question. Um, well, maybe it's a kind of question, but it's more like a comment which I have been making in the last couple of years. We do have in Europe nanoelectronics technology, very strong companies, institutes, universities. We don't have end users. We don't have the end users that would pick up the advanced nanoelectronics technologies and implement them in Europe. And this is a systematic problem I see in the proposals because when it comes to impact, we don't have the companies that will pick it up. We only have three end users, maybe four if we include Infineon. And this is a problem. We have a lot of application companies but when it comes to the advanced nanoelectronics, we don't have end users. Although it's required to have it in the impact section. And we see very often comments from the reviewers that we don't have these partners in the consortia and therefore the impact is not good enough. So I don't know if colleagues here from the advanced nanotechnologies share my opinion, but I do see this as a problem. Come, please, you want to comment to that or to? No, I just want, uh, I would like to add one, uh, one thing. Do you think there is a bit of dichotomy uh, between uh, the fact that uh, in the beginning, in the scope, you say uh, we, we want to, to give a, to Europe uh, an opportunity to, to stay in front, let's say, and, and then we talk about uh, uh, cooperation uh, with uh, international uh, companies, so is it a way, to connecting to the question, uh, to, to have in, in the network someone from uh, Asia uh, as end user? Is it against the, the scope okay. somehow? Okay. Well, yeah, I try to answer. So first on the international cooperation. I, pragmatic as I am, I would say, um, if you do that, there should be, it should be a win-win situation. So if the, if the, the, the international partner is, is, is uh, it sh the international partner should help the European project. Yeah. And the European partner should not be the junior partner in such an activity, to, be, to put it ex extreme. This is the first remark. Okay, then the end user question. Um, first, help me to understand, I guess you mean uh, as technology suppliers with user, I would say, because the end user is for me a car manufacturer, so who put, I would say the user of, the, of your technology. Yeah, what is the end user? It's the one who buys the chip. Right. Okay, but, but in five years, I, I, if the companies like Intel and, and Samsung, they would be using this technology, if any and any other, they will go to the automotive industry. But some I understand. Of them have to use this also the mobile phones, yeah. any kind of. Uh, yeah. So for me, automotive, marine, uh, drones, space, that's all on the real application. 
Yeah, this is why I ask you the question. So you mean you mean the connection to the ones who would going to manufacture the chips yeah. in big volume, in big volume. Okay, okay. How to get their interest? Yeah. I would say the concepts you come up with need to be interesting enough that, that at least you can get some support from, from, such, from such companies. Uh, whether they are in the consortium, it would be better, yeah? But to, to have, at least when I was a long time ago in the semiconductor industry, there are people who are interested in the, in the, new, in the new technologies. So uh, who, who kind of do a radar what is coming not to, miss, not to miss an upcoming technology. Of course, they will not switch immediately uh, to, 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 I don't know, to a cryogenic uh, quantum uh, computer. But uh, they are certainly interested if this is a, technolo if this is a technology that, that can be scaled up, that has some perspective. So this is, you cannot do magic, I, I, I do agree, but you, I think it's legitimate to think about that yeah, and to, to work on that. How far you get, you will, be, you will be judged by experts who are also from the field, who know the challenges, and they, they have to be, uh, they, they have to be real, realistic as well. This would be my common sense answer. But you are right, this is a big challenge uh, to make that case. Okay, if they are interested, fine, fantastic. Um, it's best if, in the end, growth and jobs, which is our big paradigm, if you can give a perspective that something improves in terms of uh, growth and jobs in Europe. So, uh, exactly. Well. Say it again, I didn't understand the big... Can we, can we oh, use the microphone. Is, is the challenge about uh, giving the European foundries technological differentiators, such as the technologies that you were talking about, uh, in the competition with, uh, let's say, Asian or American uh, founders, or is it irrealistic? It's not irrealistic, so that's, that's a possibility. Um, any direct questions to the to the call still? I will also be around uh, 20 more minutes. Yeah, if you want to talk bilateral to me, if if you think this is useful, we can do this as well. But if there are still questions, feel free to ask. <coughs> Okay, then many thanks for your interest and I will still be around if, if, you, if you think I can help you in one way or the other. Many thanks.